Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, January 24th, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today's main topic is going to be how to avoid a troublesome buyer on eBay. It can be done if you're willing to take a little time out of your schedule and do your homework first. I'm also going to talk about the eBay Dancer of the Week your comments, questions, and concerns, and some other topics I think you'll find interesting. Please note, it is still cloudy and rainy. We don't get any sunny days. It's been a lot colder than usual. We've been averaging a high of 65 to 70 for a high. That being said, let's go inside and let's get the party started. Alright guys, let's get right into it. We're going to start off as usual with your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. M. Tracy Klein wrote, Another great video, Joe. Thanks for keeping your promise to dance every time you have a sale during your video. I was screaming with delight. Also, is it me or is there a lot of buyers on eBay with high feedback and they make an offer and don't pay. This has happened to me three times now. Damn, when is eBay going to make them pay right away? Blessings and lots of cha-chings. Tracy. Tracy, yes, don't feel bad. It's happened to me too. The people with larger feedback that are not paying for items are your more experienced eBayers that know for a fact they can get away with anything as a buyer with impunity, as I've been telling you the last few months. It's only getting worse. In last week's video, I touched on the fact that eBay still has not implemented immediate payment when buyers make offers that we accept. They've been talking about it for years, even promising us that it was going to be done this summer. Well, it's June 24th and nothing's been done. Conversely, in last week's video, I told you how they pushed, literally shoved, the promoted listings standard fee increase in one month. How is it they can implement that change in world record time? but they cannot give us something we all want and that was promised to us. Next comment is from Michelle Mernick. Joe, as usual, you hit the nail on the head, especially with the changes on eBay selling platform and how they make sudden changes that negatively impact sellers immediately with little to no notice but other changes, like requiring immediate payment on offers, is dragged out for months and years. eBay is only concerned with making money for the shareholders and not the sellers. Interestingly, eBay made the announcement a couple of days ago on the change with standard promotions, and today I got an email asking me to complete an eBay seller survey. I was quite liberal with my criticisms. One question in the survey cracked me up. What other platforms do you sell on? I told eBay it was none of their business. I fully expect my sales to take a nosedive on eBay after submitting the survey to them. Good thing I have other platforms for reselling income. Great content, Joe. I like that you keep it real. Needless to say, Mer Michelle just echoed the comments that I stated right before I read her comment. I don't know why eBay does not require immediate payment immediately when buyers send offers because it would be better for them. At least they would make the commission on our sales. Right now with all these cancellations and dancers and deadbeat bidders, they don't make anything on that. Next comment is from Dennis Copper. And he wrote, update. 
When I told the seller, please package the item to avoid damage, I was helping him. I know what can happen during shipping. When he decided to do it his way, I let it be. I'm not his daddy. They left me positive feedback right after the purchase. When the item was delivered, we didn't hear a knock, but my coworker heard a big, loud plop on the ground. It was then that the damage was done. It almost made it here safely. The delivery driver was gone. Contacting the seller with pictures of the leaky box was more than enough. I did not open a case on eBay. I only sent the seller a message. They responded with a refund within hours. They were at a loss, not me. I had them down on the ground. Was I going to kick them? Hell no. That would be wicked. I gave them mercy. Me not having my item that I wanted is not the end of the world. I can still live. I can buy again or do without. I would never leave negative feedback to a seller when I got all my money back without a hassle. Joe won. What Dennis Coppa is referring to by Joe won is I was one of the few people that predicted that Dennis Coppa would not leave that seller a negative feedback. To rehash real quickly what went down, Dennis Coppa ordered, I believe it was a gallon of some liquid in a plastic container, asked the seller to ship it carefully with padding so it didn't leak. The seller said they sold so many of these, they've never had a problem. When it arrived to Dennis Coppa's business, as you know, it was leaking, probably because the delivery driver mishandled it. Dennis Copper wrote to the seller, explained the situation with pictures, bang! The seller gave him a refund, and that was that. Then Dennis asked the crowd, do you think I left the seller negative feedback? And I said, no, I don't think he did. All right, a lot of people thought Dennis did live, excuse me, thought Dennis did leave negative feedback, but I was right. I know people, all right? Dennis Copper is like me. He's strict but he's fair, all right? You never stop screwing with anybody, all right? But if they do screw you, you screw back. The comment I made earlier, I'm strict, but I'm fair, is a comment that a nun used to use when I was in grammar school. I'm strict, but I'm fair. Well, she was strict, I'll give her that. This woman, this woman of God, and I'm using that term very loosely, was built like a linebacker. She was approximately five foot four and 150 or 160 pounds of solid muscle. And when she threw a punch, she put her weight into it and many people went down. She once came at me and lifted me bodily off the ground and threw me like a rag doll. This woman of God, this holy woman. Stop. I'm getting off on a tangent here. Kathy Holloway wrote, Joe, I don't blame you. I wouldn't spend any money on lighting either. I know how people always complain. If you got lighting, then there'd be some people that would message you and say the light is too bright, it hurts their eyes. I can see you just fine. Kathy, thank you for understanding, and for the rest of you that understand, and for those of you who don't like the lighting, I understand you as well, but stop your complaining, dig deep in your pockets, and send me some alternate lighting, and I'll be glad to hook it up, okay? Last comment is from Regina Stiles. I don't know why people are complaining about your lighting. The important thing is the content you're sharing with us. I don't think Dennis left the negative. I agree with you for reasons. Okay, Regina's right on all counts, about Dennis, about the lighting. So yeah, let's move on and let's get to some new topics this week. I'm going to start off with a tutorial that I think is important for every single eBay seller. If you follow my directions, I guarantee you, it's going to help you avoid bad eBay buyers. However, there's a codicil. 
This will only work for people who are listing their items A, in auctions, or B, with the best offer option enabled when the potential buyer sends you a best offer. If you're, sending, if you're selling in the fixed price category with immediate payment required, you cannot vet your buyers ahead of time. If they buy it, they buy it, okay? But for the rest of you, let me explain my story, which I'm going to show you in screenshots. Basically, what happened is the other day, I received a best offer. He made an offer on the item from a potential buyer. The item was listed at $45 plus shipping, and the, re the offer I received was $20. Now, normally, my rule of thumb is to automatically decline anything less than half. I always do. But in this particular case, the item is a mangy dog item that I've had listed for at least a year, maybe longer. I have no problem taking $20 for this item. Okay? But I said to myself, the guy had a feedback of 43. That ain't bad. All right? And I said, let me just play it safe and let me click on the feedback he's left for his sellers. I am now going to do a cutaway. I'm going to show you what I saw. Okay, guys, I'd like you to pay attention to the screen because I'm going to give you a short tutorial about something you should do when accepting best offers from buyers. A person just sent me a best offer of $20 for a dog item. The item is currently listed on eBay for $45. So he's offering me less than half of what I'm asking. Normally, I automatically decline anything less than half. But in this case, I was considering accepting the offer because I've had the thing listed for over one year. It's a dog, and I just want to get rid of it. But like I've always told you, you should always play it safe and check out the buyer's history and the feedback he's left for sellers. So take a look at the screen. I'm going to walk you through it. You'll notice I'm checking this particular person's feedback, and I'm only interested in the feedback he left for others, which is what I clicked on this tab here. If you look up here, you'll see he hasn't purchased anything on eBay in at least six months. But when you look at the feedback he has left for all his buyers, it is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. Now, this guy doesn't buy a lot on eBay because if you look, let's skip down here. Item information is not available for the following items because the feedback is over five years old, which means in the last five years, he's only left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feedbacks. Five out of the seven were negative. Okay? Two of them were positive. But let's go on and let's look at some of the other feedback. Now, here's one that he left a positive, but obviously he wanted to cancel his, his deal. All right? Look at all these negatives he left for people because he didn't get his item before Christmas, which, as you know, is not the fault of the seller in most cases. It's the fault of the shipping company, whether it's the post office or whatever. And especially around Christmas time, you can't guarantee you're going to get your items. All right? Look at this here. Look at this reply from this particular seller. Your order on December 11th. Today is the 20th. You ask before Christmas? No message? No EMS fee? This, look at this, just one after the other. All right? Couple of couple of positives sprinkled in there. Look at this one. Nice with a negative feedback. All right. Let's go to the next page. Look at this. How could one person leave 
so many negative feedbacks. And look at this, positive. The cover was scratched in several places. He did it to this guy, he did it to this guy, he did it to this guy, and this poor guy got a negative out of it, while the others got positives. <laughs> now, I declined this guy and I blocked him. But I feel it's my duty as an eBay seller to educate him. So I'm going to show you a screenshot now. Take a look at this. This is exactly what I wrote to him. I'll read it to you. I was going to accept your offer because this is not a very popular item and I have no problem selling it for $20. But when I saw how many negative feedbacks you leave the sellers on eBay, there is no way I want a chance doing business with you. Period. This is exactly the message I wrote and I sent to this buyer and of course I blocked him. Please comment in the comment section below what you would have done if you were in my position and checked this person's account before either accepting or declining his offer. So guys, please use the tutorial as a guide. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you employ it. Employ that method when someone sends you either a best offer or if you have an auction running and you have maybe two or three bids or even just one bid, check your buyer, all right? Check the feedback he's left for other sellers. And if you're going to either block him or decline his offer, it's important to tell him why you're doing it. Like you saw the message I wrote to him. You leave too many negatives, boss man. That ain't gonna fly. Not in, not in my not in my sandbox. No way. I don't want to deal with him. And he's not welcome in my eBay store. Is he welcome in yours? Talk to me. I want to hear from each and every one of you what you would have done with that particular buyer. Next topic, the eBay dancer of the week. I've seen some videos that were made last week and some comments on Facebook eBay groups where people who sell in the collectible category brag that they have the best buyers on eBay, that they always pay right away, they never return anything, no deadbeats in the collectible category, and I do believe them, okay? That does seem to be the case. The people who buy in the collectibles category use this. They got a brain, they got two eyes, they read the listing, they do their homework, and they keep their word. They're good buyers. Hi. That was the male person. Now, conversely, as you know, I sell in eBay Motors. And although eBay Motors has good buyers, and there's a lot of money to be made, there's also a crap load of aggravation, more than most of you have ever dealt with. And I'm willing to bet good money right now that aside from you guys who sell on eBay Motors, the rest of you, none of you have experienced the kind of crap I go through on a daily basis. So here's what happened the other day. A guy sends me a best offer of $100 on an item that I have listed for $135. I have to tell you that it was for an old Cadillac. And because it's really old and correctly described, it only fits the vehicle that it's listed for. Kabish? So, I accepted his offer for $100 on the $135 item, and I immediately sent him an invoice. No payment was forthcoming right away. No surprise there. About half an hour later, I get another offer. 
This is also for another old set of caddy hubs. The guy's offering me $60 on a $90 item. Once again, it's the same case as previously. It's a dog item. I have no problem dropping the price. But I look and it's going to Pennsylvania and I know that the guy who just bought, or should I say just committed to buy the first set, was from Pennsylvania. And sure enough, it's the same guy. Now I'm on high alert. I may have a situation here. The two sets that he's committed to buy are not interchangeable. They don't fit the same. Now it's possible he has two cars, two different old Cadillacs, and he wants to buy a set for each, and that's fine. But if he's going to try and put them on one car, then we're going to have a problem. They're both not going to fit. So we had some feedback. I didn't see any problems with his account. So I stuck my neck way out and I accepted the offer. What happens next? I swear to Christ on the cross in downtown Brooklyn, New York, it took him all of 15 seconds when I sent him the combined invoice to break into the dance. <laughs> Here we go. You know what he says to me? Will these fit a 1956 Chevy? Let me tell you something. I all but lost it at that point. I wrote to him, I wrote back to him, I said, why would you ask me a question like this after you have already committed to buy the item? You're supposed to ask all questions first. I said, I'm canceling both your orders and I'm blocking you immediately so you can never do this to me again. And that's exactly what I did. I canceled both his orders and I blocked him. Not necessarily in that order. Of course, he wrote back to me, oh yeah, well, you know, I made a mistake. I don't really know what I'm doing, but don't block me because I do want to buy something from you. <whistles> you ain't buying from me. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. You guys can have that guy. This is a day in the life of an eBay Motors seller. And people, buyers, they, they see nothing wrong with asking questions after they make a commitment to purchase the item. This is not unusual for me. Normally, they pull this stunt after they agree to buy one item, not two. Now, I know some of you guys are going to say, well, Joe, after you agree with the first item, you shouldn't have accepted a second from the guy. It's like what happened to me a few weeks ago. I thought either A, he would buy at least one set and want to cancel the other, or B, possibly he did have two cars and wanted both sets. It turns out he doesn't even have a Cadillac. I don't like to use the word stupid, but I'm going to in this case. This particular buyer, in my opinion, is stupid and doesn't understand the spoken word. Definitely not the written word. Unbelievable. It, it can be very, very frustrating, guys. It can be very frustrating, especially when there are no sanctions. No sanctions whatsoever on deadbeat bidders who don't read. As far as sales are concerned this week, the week started off very strong. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, excellent days. Wednesday, bang! It's like someone put the brakes on. I had my slowest day in over a month. I do not know what to attribute it to. I have no idea. But it was slow. 
Thursday continue to be slow. We'll just see how it goes now. I don't know. I mean, I've been doing very, very well, so I'm really in no position to make any complaints as far as sales is concerned. I'm hoping it comes back, and I'm sure it will. So, yeah, that's basically all I have to say this week. I will say that the drink of the day is going to be Coke. Unfortunately, no sales were made during the filming of this video. It happens. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Every Friday I come out here, I make these videos to try and help you stay successful on eBay. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciate it. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comments section what you want me to hit up next week, and I'll try my best to do it. Also, address the topics that I brought up today. Specifically, would you have blocked the buyers that I discussed? Namely, the first guy who sent me a best offer, which I really would have accepted, but for the fact that he negs way too many sellers. Now, while I'm on this subject, I meant to bring this up earlier. Don't you guys remember eBay coming out with a statement months, if not years ago, saying there were checks and balances in place to be sure that eBay buyers do not abuse the feedback system? Do you remember that, right? Well, obviously, that's all hogwash. When you've got a guy like this leaving negatives for just about every seller, there are no checks and balances in place, okay? Anyway, now it's your turn. You want to be heard? Comment below. Rock on and peace!